Sri Lanka, formerly known as Ceylon. Almost as large as Ireland, the tropical island lies off the southeast coast of India. It's a land full of cultural and scenic diversity. And it's a nature paradise, rich in species with exotic flora and fauna. To the west, where the sun sinks into the Indian Ocean, lies Colombo, the capital of Sri Lanka. Nothing remains of the rustic charm of this former fishing village. The Colombo of today is a modern metropolis and a major port for the world's trade routes. But Colombo is also the city of temples. Sri Kailasanathar Swami Devasthanam is one of the oldest Hindu temples in Colombo, with shrines dedicated to Lord Shiva and Ganesha. The temple tower symbolizes mystical Mount Meru, seat of Lord Brahma and the demigods. Nearby is the Colombo railway station, starting point for one of the island's most popular train journeys. Pulled by a steam-driven locomotive, this historical train is a favorite with locals and visitors alike. Wood-paneled compartments hark back to bygone British colonial days. The showpiece of the lovingly restored train is the restaurant carriage. And of course, the bar. The nostalgic journey heads towards the center of the island. Visitors from abroad are greeted by traditional Sinhalese dancers. And they're welcomed by an elephant. The animal is sacred in this country. The interior of Sri Lanka is fertile and lush. A tropical climate predominates in most of the lower-lying regions. Despite the high population density, it's an ideal habitat for plants and animals. There are more than 400 species of birds on the island, 27 of which are unique to Sri Lanka. Countless lakes supply the fields and the virgin forests with abundant water. Mm -hmm. 
Shimmering white stupas are Buddhist monuments that can be seen from miles around. In Sri Lanka, they're called Dagobas and are found in every temple compound, often with holy relics sealed inside them. The country's culture has been shaped by Buddhism for over 2,000 years. Seventy percent of the country's inhabitants are Buddhists, but Muslims, Christians, and especially Hindus live here too. For years, warlike skirmishes with the Hindu Tamils gripped the country, but peace has reigned since 2009. It was not only the people who suffered during the many years of armed conflict. During the civil war, many elephants were killed by landmines or died from gunshot wounds. They used to be regarded as an endangered species, but lately their stocks have slowly begun to rise. Today, there are some 4,000 wild Asian elephants living on Sri Lanka, thanks to numerous conservation projects. Asian elephants don't grow as large as their African cousins, and they have smaller ears. In the past, they were hunted for their precious ivory. Today, it's generally only for photo opportunities. This bull elephant is obviously feeling perturbed. Not an entirely safe situation, as bull elephants can weigh up to five and a half tons and can easily flip over a jeep full of passengers. Luckily, he soon loses interest. Deep tracks in the rice paddies are clear proof that elephants don't just stick to a diet of leaves and grass. A fully grown pachyderm needs about 150 kilograms of sustenance every day. They can destroy a whole crop and with it an entire livelihood with their foraging excursions. For centuries, farmers here have guarded their fields at night to frighten off the elephants with noise or even weapons. Out of reach of the elephants, they've built little huts in the rocks or in treetops. These elevated sentry posts offer good views and are an effective early warning system against possible marauders. But the nights are long. To stay awake, farmers recite long poems called Pelkavi, handed down the generations, and today taught in heritage lessons in schools. There are more than five million cars, buses, and motorcycles riding around on Sri Lanka's roads. In only the past five years, the number of vehicles has doubled. These vehicles not only serve as a means of transport for people and goods, but also as a status symbol, and sometimes even as a market store. The market on the edge of the town of Dambulla is both rendezvous and bazaar for the entire region. Everything is available here, from fruit and vegetables to household utensils and beetle leaves, said to be stimulating as well as good for your health. There is every possible variety of sweets and especially spices and vegetables on offer. 
Much of Sri Lanka's widely varied cuisine is vegetarian, as many Far Eastern faiths prohibit the consumption of animals. Some 70 kilometers east of Dambulla lies Polonaruva, the ancient royal city. In the 11th and 12th centuries, this was the capital city of the island kingdom. Grand temples, statues and palaces were erected and still bear witness today to the power and importance of Sinhalese royalty. The 10 hectare archaeological park attracts hundreds of visitors every day, not only from overseas, but locals too. It was one of the most significant epochs in the history of Sri Lanka. The ruins today are our UNESCO World Cultural Heritage. The grounds offer many peaceful oases. Jakanas live up to their name of lily trotters as they hunt among the lotus blossoms. There are plenty of insects, amphibians and little fish to make it an ideal refuge for them, despite the tourists. The reclining Buddha statue is one of Sri Lanka's most important artworks. A symbol of Buddhism revered to this day, it attracts many admirers. These ruins are inhabited by tribes of Ceylon bonnet monkeys, a type of macaque, who enjoy nothing more than digging into the offerings left by the devout. A paradisiac life, only rarely threatened by dangerous neighbors, such as this monitor lizard. Macaques live in large family groups and belong to the few primate genera that can swim and even dive. Dark looming clouds signal a change in the weather. Sri Lanka's tropical climate has two monsoon seasons that bring heavy rainfalls. But not everywhere, as the mountainous central region creates an effective meteorological divide. This leads to the island having very different climate zones. While it might be raining in the interior, the southwestern coast is basking in bright sunshine, perfect beach weather. The white beaches of Sri Lanka were once a holiday maker's paradise, until Christmas 2004. The tsunami of the century hit not only Indonesia and Thailand, but destroyed the south and eastern coasts of Sri Lanka completely. Almost 40,000 people lost their lives, buildings and boats were demolished, and the country's infrastructure was totally disrupted. The effects of this natural disaster will be felt for a long time to come. 
there is still not enough money to rebuild villages and replace boats. The fishermen aren't starving, though. Their traditional method of trawl fishing yields rich bounty. Helpers all receive a share of the catch, and there are always takers for the rest. Rice paddies as far as the eye can see. It seems as if most of the island is covered in them. But the rice produced here is only enough for domestic needs. Rice is the dietary staple and is eaten at every meal. Countless dams supply the water so essential for rice crops in the paddies. The dams are a great favorite with water buffaloes. Strong yet peaceable, these powerful creatures have for centuries been employed here as working animals. Wallowing in water and mud cools their skin and protects them from irritating insects. To grow a kilogram of rice, you need between 3,000 and 5,000 liters of water. During the monsoon season, rain is plentiful. When the monsoons are over, the 2,000-year-old irrigation system, with its man-made dams and channels, ensures that the rice paddies can be used all year round. High-yield rice crops can be sown and harvested two to three times a year. Local farmers each farm their individual allotment. The work is exhausting and usually only brings in enough to feed their own family. But most Sri Lankans still live off the land. As in every Buddhist country, there are numerous stupas on Sri Lanka, with elephants as symbolic elements. Originally, stupas were built as tombs for eminent monks, but soon became a symbol of the teachings of Buddha. One should always walk clockwise around a stupa. This is said to improve one's own karma. Okay, we've finished our karma now. <laughs> a belief in reincarnation is useful if you happen to be driving a car in Sri Lanka. Hair-raising, overtaking maneuvers on the narrow roads seem almost obligatory. Hooting is pretty well mandatory too, and no one takes offense. It's a long bus ride along a winding mountain road to the central highlands of Sri Lanka. The landscape with its montane rainforests rises up to two and a half thousand meters above sea level. Okay, 
With the Declaration of Independence from the British Commonwealth in 1972, Ceylon was renamed Sri Lanka. However, Ceylon tea is still recognized today as a symbol of quality. Together with India, Kenya and China, Sri Lanka is one of the largest producers of tea in the world. And the area around the city of Nuwara Elia is a major tea producing region. Nuwara Elia lies about 2,000 meters above sea level. With an average temperature of 16 degrees centigrade, the climate here is ideal for growing tea. Tea harvesting is women's work. A stick indicates which leaves and buds may be picked. Whatever grows above the level may be harvested. A woman can harvest around 18 kilograms of tea every day, for which she's paid around $2. The tea leaves are then taken to a nearby collection point where every sack is carefully weighed and the weight noted. After this, the green tea leaves are put through a complicated process of fermentation and drying. The uplands around here rarely get hot or sunny. The climate is temperate, and abundant rainfalls are the source of its many creeks, rivers, and waterfalls. The roaring of the cascading falls creates a constant backdrop of sound as an artist works on capturing the scenery's natural beauty. In the 19th century, British colonial officers used to come to Nuwara Elia to rest and recuperate. Many of their buildings and gardens are still preserved today, it was the era of the powerful tea barons. Ceylon tea became world famous. One of the most popular tourist destinations in the country is the Elephant Orphanage. Despite elephants having a very special status in Sri Lankan culture, an estimated 200 of them are killed by people every year. A baby elephant losing its mother in this way has very little chance of survival in the wild on its own. The elephant orphanage provides a refuge for these babies. Older elephant cows often adopt these calves as their own, even though they did not give birth to them. Visitors are able to get up close to the animals here and observe their behavior. In very hot weather, elephants will fan their ears. As the ears are well supplied with blood vessels, they function as a cooling system for the whole body. The elephant orphanage herd consumes several tons of food every day. Their keepers have to work hard just to keep up. In the afternoon, well fortified and in an orderly fashion, they head off to somewhere very special. Every day, the elephants bathe in a nearby river.
water cools them off, its wetness helping to soothe their skin. For visitors, this lively spectacle is definitely a high point of the day, as it obviously is for the elephants too. At around five years old, the young elephants are able to look after themselves. They're then released into the wild in a protected national park to live in freedom in one of the greatest places of the world, Sri Lanka.